Sky-high gas prices is raising new questions about America's overall energy policy. Here to talk about what can be done, Heidi Heitkamp, former U.S. Senator of North Dakota. She's a founding uh, board member of One Country Project, CNBC contributor. I don't know. I wish you still had constituents, Heidi, because I, I think they, if you're trying to satisfy their concerns in, uh, in your state, um, we might get a different answer, I think. But you'll give us an honest answer. Uh, and former U.S. Senator and New Hampshire Governor Judd Gregg. So I'm going to start once again. Harold Ford Jr. ought to send me royalties. But he has an op-ed piece. A Biden retreat could lower gas prices. His war on fossil fuels has proved costly for American consumers. He outlines a lot of things. He's a Democrat, uh, Heidi. He was a Democrat congressman for 10 years from, from Tennessee. Uh, he at least acknowledges that the Biden administration has created headwinds that have resulted in the soup that we're in right now. Do you, do you acknowledge that? And, and what can we do? Well, first off, let's just acknowledge that the COVID and investor concerns about the lack of profitability when oil was at $40 reduced investment. So let's just set a baseline. But you've got to send the right signals to this industry. You can't say, hurry up and produce more. And oh, by the way, you're on a limited leash and you know, you're not going to be profitable going into the future. He's right about setting long-term energy policies. And you can't do climate without figuring out how you're going to work with the major producers of energy in this country. And so were there Biden missteps? Yes. Did Biden's missteps create the crisis that we're in exclusively? The answer is absolutely no. And anyone who knows what's been happening the last five years know that, knows that's not true. And so that the, the important thing to me, Joe, is let's just get rid of politics for a minute. And let's talk about what we need to do to build a legitimate energy policy that addresses decarbonization. We, we and you can't, can't do that though, without right? oil but, Yeah, but we can't because a lot of these things are they're mutually exclusive. What needs to be done, Judd, is, is the lobby, the green lobby, is, is not going to let these things happen. And, and they seem to have Joe Biden's ear at this point. Well, I, well, first off, I agree with what Heidi just said. I agree with what Harold Ford. They're two of the rationals folks in the Democratic Party, but they're not in charge of the party right now, as you're noting. Right. The party's being run by uh, the Green movement, uh, the ESG movement. Uh, to some degree, I think they're actually crocodile tears coming on the, si on the price of gas, because a lot of these folks for years demanded the price of gas go up so that there'd be less utilization and we'd move out of uh, cars that were running on gas to cars that were running on electricity. So I do think it's, it's somewhat disingenuous. It, and, it's, and the point was made distinctly by the president when he, he meets with a bunch of people who build windmills and he sends the energy folks over to meet with the former Michigan governor, who's a good person, but she doesn't have the ear of the president on this issue. The uh, hard left has the ear of the president. Uh, to solve this problem is pretty simple. Uh, it, three words, supply, supply, supply. And you're going to not get supply if you don't allow the companies, as Heidi pointed out, to make an investment uh, that they can get a return on over the long term, because these investments are hugely expensive. Building a refinery costs billions of dollars. Building pipelines costs billions of dollars. Even drilling is very expensive. Uh, and if they don't think they're going to get a return on it, they're not going to get capital to invest in it, and you're not going to get the supply you need. But we, we have more oil and gas than any other country in the world, with the exception possibly of Saudi Arabia, although we're competitive there. And so this is a truly self-inflicted event. Yes, uh, uh, Heidi's right, it didn't occur entirely on this administration's watch, but the future of the problem is occurring on this administration's watch, and the future of the problem is that this administration very much opposes allowing the energy industry to be effective in the area of returning, uh, of returning capital, of returning profit on the capital invested over long term, and that basically is why you're in the out years, going to continue to have this problem. I do suspect, however, that we're going to see some demand destruction occurring here fairly soon. People are just going to stop using as much gas as they historically used. Uh, and thus, I, I actually think the price will come down. Uh, I suspect it will be around $80 a barrel by this fall. But uh, that's not going to solve the long-term problem, which is how do we transition from an oil-based carbon policy into a uh, alternative energy policy in an orderly way as versus in a industrial policy procedure, which is uh, 
haphazard and uh, overly aggressive and therefore creates these huge spikes in the cost of energy for Main Street America. Heidi. Uh yeah, I mean, if you guys were looking for a debate today, this is this is one of those rare occasions where uh, the governor and I are absolutely in sync. You cannot do what this administration set out to do, which was to decarbonize in five years, 10 years, whatever their, their goal was, without sitting down with the industry that produces the majority of energy in our country. And one of the things that hasn't been talked about, Joe, has been we're going to go into the winter heating season. We're seeing record high electricity prices. We're seeing record high natural gas prices. This isn't just about gasoline at the pump. This is about delivering affordable energy, especially for those people who struggle every day to make a paycheck stretch uh, until the next paycheck. And even yeah. more important than that is what's going to happen in Europe. I mean, yeah. they're going to go through a horrific situation, uh, and it's going to cause a, a very severe recession and obviously a lot of uh, trauma for the European people. Uh, and that's going to wash over onto our shores. I mean, we're their big big buyer of our products. We're a big buyer of their products. Uh, if they can't produce their products because the energy is being rationed, we're going to have problems. They're going to have problems. Uh, this is a very bad public policy is leading to very bad activity in the economy. Uh, when you put industrial policy on a political correctness a track as versus a market oriented track, you end up with bad things happening to an economy and the people who suffer are Main Street America. Yeah, and it's it's just not policy, Governor. You got to recognize that we had a pandemic, which reduced supply, which reduced investment. Coming out of that, we saw a big spike in demand, which created supply demand challenges. And then on top of that, you have a war, which created huge energy disruption in Europe. And so all of these coming to a confluence creates a real, I think, opportunity for all of us to think about what does that energy policy of the next 30 years look like? And if you're saying we're going to totally get rid of fossils in the next five years, you're living in some kind of dream world. It's not going to happen. You know, just that we could even get into the discussion about critical minerals and battery storage. It, we just have to be realistic and apply facts to our problems. Well, well you're absolutely right on everything you just said, Heidi. Yeah.